Alrighty, here we go. Let's start unit 8 test review, which I'm sure you will do fairly well on. Let's go ahead and get this going, and hopefully you'll watch this video, and it'll help you just do a little bit better for the test. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, so the first set of problems we're doing is trying to simplify the radicals. <clears throat> and again, um, it doesn't matter what you're dividing by as long as you're dividing by something that divides evenly, but the point is, you're trying to break it down to prime numbers. Now, the prime numbers I will probably be working with are like 2, 3, 5, and 7. Otherwise, the numbers get really big, and, well, y'all freak out with really big numbers. So, the idea here is, okay, like 56, let's say you say is 7 and 8. Okay, and then the 8 is 2 and 4, and then the 4 is 2 and 2. You, you see, I broke it down to nothing but 2, 3, 5, or 7. Look at only the end branches. You identify that you have a pair of twos. You write what that pair is. So that pair is a two. And then you put the other two leftover numbers, the two and the seven, into the square root. And then you can say two times seven is 14, and you'll get two square root of 14. And you see how that works. All right, so now let's do the 200. 200. All right, two and 100. 100 is 10 and 10. 10 is 5 and 2, 5 and 2. Okay. So you can see here, and again, notice how I'm making sure I cover all my, see all my end branches. I've got a pair of fives, and i got a pair of twos. And i got a two left over. So now that I had two pairs, and you notice I wrote what the pairs were. I didn't write the number, you know, like I didn't write five, five, and two, two. I just wrote a pair of fives, a pair of twos. Um, so five times two is ten, ten squared is two, and you're done. I know, these are easy, right? Anyways, uh, let's skip that. Oh, no, 216, that's a big number. Okay, divide by 2. Get 108. And then, let's say, oh, 9 and 12. I mean, you could have gone 2 and 54 and then said, yeah, like, 2 and 27, 3 and 9, stuff like that. And, you know, it, it gets to be the same. Okay, so here you can see this has got a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s, and I got a 2 and a 3 left over, and you get 6 squared of 6. Now, look, if you had done it a different way, let's say you had gone... 2, 16, and said 2 and 108, and then you said, oh, that's 2 and 54, that's 2 and 27, oh, no, I don't know what to do, because it's an odd number now, okay, that's 3 and 9, 3 and 3, so you see here, I still end up with a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s, and that gives me 6 square root, I mean, notice, and I still have the 2 and 3 left over, so there's different ways of doing this that will still get you to the same answer. So keep that in mind. Uh, and there you go. Okay. Okay, so on the next two, we're talking about rationalizing square roots. So we want to multiply both top and bottom by whatever is the bottom number there. So in this case, square root of 2, square root of 2. And you see that you get, like in this one, 13 squared of 2 over 2. Notice how the square root of 2, or the square root is canceled out on the bottom. When the top, we're just combining the two numbers. Now, what happens when you do have another square root there on top? Those numbers you can multiply. Notice the square root is still canceled out. You will not do anything with that 18. You're just going to say 2 times the square root of 3, and that's going to be 6, square root of 6. Then, yes, you could say, oh, look, 18 and 3 are divisible, and divide and get from there. But, you know, there you go. Now, for those next ones, again, we all we got to do is like say divide, or I'm sorry, multiply, and then take the square root. And so, look, again, I wouldn't waste any time. You say 8 times 12 is 96, and put the square root of 96. Don't waste time, and say, simplify it until after the, um, like after you're done with all the other problems, because at least you'll get a half credit here. And then, if you've got time, come back. I mean, you don't want to go, oh, I didn't finish, sir, I need more time. Well, you know, you could have gotten like two or three extra other problems right, maybe in the time it took you to do this. Now, if you're quick about doing this, then go ahead and do it. But anyways, we already know it's 8 and 12. 8 is 4 and 2. 4 is 2 and 2. Notice how I'm breaking these down, back down to 2, 3s, or 4, or 2, 3s, 5, or 7. And you get 4 squared of 6. Here I've got 6, 15, 90, 9 and 10... 3, 3, so I got a pair of 3s and a pair of uh, 5 and a 2, so 3 squared of 10. I have no idea what I'm writing there. Oh, that's what. So there you go. This is kind of what I was able to do. Again, these are things that you should find hopefully fairly easy. So for the special right triangles, you may want to make sure you have this little formulas for the the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. Um, maybe you make note that like to go from the short leg 
to the hypotenuse, you need to multiply by 2. If you're coming backwards from the hypotenuse to the short leg, you're dividing by 2. You know, little things like that that might help. So, like, when that way, when you see number 8, yes, this will be corrected in a second, you can tell, okay, oh, well, that's 9, then well, that's 9. And then that means that is 9 squared of 2 because it's a 45, 45, 90. There, fixed it. Ha! Anyways, um, and then on, like, number 9... You've got this, and okay, well then, look, I've got the short leg. It's easy when you've got the short leg, because then you're saying, okay, it's that number times the square root of 3 for the long leg, and then it's double that for the, the hypotenuse. And there you go. Fairly simple, guys. I mean, come on, I know y'all can do this. And that's a times 2, not a point 0.2. Uh, and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so now let's do this. And notice here, this one's a 30, 60, 90, but this one is... Not the long leg, it is the hypotenuse. And how can you tell? Again, it is still opposite the 90 degree angle. So that means then I'm going backwards. I'm going to divide by 2 because I'm going backwards like that. There we go, divide by 2. So that gives me 49. And then I can easily find the long leg and say that's 49 squared to 3. Uh, here, this one should be 40 squared to 2, and again, because it's a 45, 45, 90, and you can tell that is the side that's supposed to be the square root of 2. A lot of this should be that easy. Oh, no, we've got the problems where I have to, like, use word problems. Well, then try it out, silly. Okay, it's a 45, 45, 90. So draw something that looks like a 45, 45, 90. And then you notice the hypotenuse. Now, where is the hypotenuse located? It's on that slant, so that means that 16 squared of 2 is right here. <gasps> then that makes it easy to say, oh, that's 16. Bam, done. 19 squared of 3, longer leg. This is where you got to be careful. There's the 19 squared of 3. So that means then the short leg is 19. And then you multiply by 2 to get 38. And I apparently hit enter and I got all of it. Uh, this one, I don't know. I'll put it in as a bonus. I've gone over it with everybody, so hopefully y'all get that. We'll kind of go from there. All right? Uh, and then skipping this. Okay, so now let's do this one where we have to use a geometric mean with some similar triangles and kind of find these sides of a triangle and stuff like that. Also, uh... Oh, let's throw, in a mat. let's throw in a bonus word here. So what should our bonus word be for today? Hmm. I think I'll make the bonus word imagine. Let's go with that. Imagine. Imagine that you can get good grades. Imagine that you studied and did well. Imagine that you're listening to me as I do this video. I know. I imagine a lot of things. Anyways. Okay, so here's like something that you can put into your formula chart. Like you've got two numbers, A and B. To help you find x, you just multiply a times b and take the square root. No decimal answers. Just put the square root. Uh, for y, it's a times a plus b. And for z, it's going to be b times a plus b. In other words, what's going on here is that I'm trying to say is that uh, you notice that the a is close to the y, so we're multiplying by that one, and the z, b is close to the z, but you have to add for those second two. Uh, if you need to simplify, you can. This one is number 15. You can see here, 8 times 23. Uh, so there's my y, and there's my z. At least give me the answers of multiplication. So like that one's 184, this one is 248, and this one is 713. If you have time, then yeah, go ahead and simplify it for some bonus points. And get like 2 squared of 46, or 2 squared of 62. Uh, 713 can be simplified, by the way. All right, so here, let's look at this one. 6 and 20, 120. 6 times 6 plus 20, and then 20 times 6 plus 20, and that gives me 156 and 520. And again, if you can simplify them, great. So like this one would have been, let's say... Okay, so you can see here, the first one, the 120, would have been 2 squared to 30. The next one would have been 2 squared to 39. And the last one would have been 2 squared to 130. Again, though, if you give me these 120, 156, and 520, I'd be okay. All right? Okay, so pause the recording or the video here real quick. See if you can do 17 and 18 on your own. And then press play, and you'll see the answers. Okay, and then the last one, these are the answers that I got for 17 and 18. In purple, those should be the simplified answers, which is very weird that I was, like, getting the same numbers. That's kind of scary odd. Anyways, kind of freaky to be think about it. Uh, you can see here how that worked. That's all you had to do there. Hopefully you got those same numbers. Again, I will take this right here as answers, but if you give me these simplified ones, you can get some bonus points. Okay? 
Anyways, um, you know what? I'm going to call that a day and say that's it for this one. And if y'all have any questions, hopefully y'all are ready for the test. Um, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for your time. Y'all take care.